Welcome back to Kids Life. I'm sitting here with Kathy Walker, Child Education Consultant, and today we're going to chat about resilience. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. What would you suggest, or how do you suggest, that we build resilience in our children? Look, I think it's really important first to define what resilience is, and I think resilience really is about helping a child or an adult to, to not give up, to keep persevering, to persist, to not develop perhaps what we might call the opposite of resilience, which is learned helplessness. I, I can't do it, I won't do it, I won't try. Uh, and I think it's very important. I mean, in a lifetime, unfortunately, all of our children will have disappointments, challenges, problems that they're going to have to face. And so for us as parents and as educators to try to help our children develop some resiliency strategies, sure. ways in which not to give up are very important. Sure. How we were parented, Cathy, obviously plays a big part in how we parent our children. Are there ways that we can reprogram ourselves so that we can parent our children in the best, most positive way? I think it's true that we all end up hearing ourselves say things and we think, oh my goodness, that sounds just like my own parent. And yeah, so I think it is important. I think to be able to parent well, we need to be reflective. We need to think carefully about what is it that we're wanting for our children. I know that often we hear people say, oh, you know, that was good enough for me. That's how it happened when I was young. Uh, it didn't do me any harm, so I'm just going to do the same thing. And I think, that's, I think that's a little bit dangerous. I think as parents we need to be wise, we need to be discerning, we need to be thoughtful. We need to think about the time in history that we're parenting and the time in history that our children are having a childhood. Not everything stays the same. And I think the more reflective we are and the more thoughtful we are, the more we're able to think about, well, how can I talk to my child? How might I discipline them? How might I build their resilience? And I think so being reflective and open to change, I think, as parents is very important. Sure. We're all trying to be the best parents that we possibly can and I think that's, if we're trying to be good parents, well, we're, we're getting it half right. Although we do still sort of fall off the wagon, so to speak, we do get frustrated and yep. maybe shout. So how does that affect our children when they see us lose control? Not necessarily lose control, but do shout, do growl, get impatient with them. I think there's a few things to say about that. One is that part of building resiliency is being able to understand that sometimes people are angry, sometimes people will feel sad, sometimes we'll feel scared or fearful. Uh, we won't want to do something that's difficult for us and that that's okay, that life isn't always happy, that it isn't always smooth sailing. And so to see your parents sometimes lose it a bit, be a bit angry, for the parent to be upset or frustrated or tired is actually okay, I think. I think that within the safety of a, a loving family home life, we don't have to be perfect either. I think if we have gone too far, we've yelled or said something we regret, I think it's respectful and honest to say to the child, look, I was angry, I was speaking because I was angry and I, I apologise if I yelled too much or I wish I hadn't done that. Because I think that's also about being resilient. You know, you can apologise, you can start again, you can try again. So I think not worrying. I always say to parents, you don't have to be perfect uh, and neither do children. So we won't be doing any long-term damage if we see the error of our ways? I, th I think that's right. I think that uh, if we were not open to change and we just kept yelling and we kept doing all those things that perhaps are not in the child's best interest, then I think we do do damage to their self-esteem, to their resilience, to a whole lot of things. But I think if we're aware, we're allowed to give ourselves permission to make mistakes but to fix them up and sure. to keep to keep trying to do as much as we can to help our child feel good about themselves. Sure. Now getting back to resilience in the school environment, yeah. how would we deal with um, a child who hasn't been invited to a friend's birthday party when the rest of his peer group has? Obviously that's going to really hurt heart, his heart wrenching. Yeah, heart wrenching for the child and usually the parent too. Mm. Um, look, you know one of the things about life is that we can't always fix things for our children and we can't always make things perfect for them. So one of the, the strategies that's great for building resilience, particularly at a time of disappointment, is when perhaps a child comes home and says, oh, I wasn't invited to the party. 
And the strategy that can sometimes help but not fix it is just to say, yes, that must feel very disappointing. I can see you feel really unhappy about that. I know you really wish you could have been. Now that doesn't fix it for the child, but it's in what we call that space of acknowledgement. Something doesn't feel right. I can't fix it for you. I can't make the child re-invite you to the party, but I understand how it feels. And that's part of resiliency, being able to bear the loss, the disappointment, but being comforted by someone who cares about you and isn't so busy trying to fix it. You know, the alternative of that is, oh, don't worry, someone else will invite you to another party and don't worry, you'll have your turn to do this or that. I think sometimes we jump in too quickly to save them, to fix them, to gloss over, when in fact building resilience is sometimes helping our children just sit in a space of disappointment and being comforted for it. Sure. Almost being able to empathise with them. Empathy is big. I think empathy is a very major thing in our relationship with children. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you have a child and you're the one who has the child that doesn't invite one of their friends to the birthday party. Mm. How, as a parent, should we deal with that? So it's resilience, but it's not resilience in our own child. It's almost dealing with another child's Birthday parties are becoming more and more complex mm. and more and more big and mm -hmm. huge. It's and <laughs> I know, it is a minefield. But I think one of the things is that as the parent of a child, perhaps in, particularly in the early primary or preschool years, is I don't want parents feeling they have to have big birthday parties anyway. And so uh, it would be not what I'd recommend that everyone in the whole class minus one is invited. I think you either as a parent say yes you can have everyone or you can have three or four or five special children and that way there's not the everyone was invited except one and I think parents can take some responsibility for that. I think that can be quite challenging for the one child that doesn't get invited but if you're one of ten that didn't get invited then it's not such a sure. big deal. Sure. Yeah. Well thank you Cathy. The information you've given us today has been Priceless. We all want to build strong, resilient children and confident children. So thank you, Cathy. You're welcome. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you.